This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for attending um, Tidiwit's um, Master's Oration. So um, he's come on a very long journey. Um, we thought it would be quick, but COVID got really in the way of his, his Master's. So. Um, Tidiwit's a government vet from Thailand um, and he joined us on a scholarship from their government um, and took a major role in this project of ours, a Commonwealth supported project, um, tracking down pigeons to look for paramyxa virus, uh, which was partly risk assessment for the poultry industries. Um, so so Tidiwit is a bit of a youngster. He's done, finished his DVM at Cassett Sart Uni in, um, in Thailand in 2012, then did a One Health uh, Masters for a year. Um, and has joined us um, oh, pre-pandemic. So I think it was 2019, was it? Did you when you started? Yeah, yeah. November. So it's a master's, November 21. A master's that's dragged on a lot longer than it should have, but COVID really got in the way of him doing a lot of field work. But um, he's persistent and uh, very happy to see him um, heading towards um, write up, which is due very soon. So um, take it away, Tidiwe, if you like. Or should I start now? Yep. All right. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Titiwit Noi Nam Thieng. Uh, I'm a master's student supervised by NK and Simon in EP Group and Gemma from ACDP. Uh, today, I would like to present all my research. Uh, the title is Pigeon Paramyxovirus Type 1 or PPMV1 in feral pigeons in Victoria. Uh, I will start the presentation with introduction followed by the research question and aims, and then I will go for research chapter one and research chapter two, and feel free to ask my questions after I finish the presentation. For introduction, Let's start with the Newcastle disease. Newcastle disease is an infection of poultry with highly virulent strain of avian paramyxovirus type 1 or Newcastle disease virus. Uh, the highly virulent strain is divided by World Organization for Animal Health as the virus has the intracellular pathogenicity index in the O6 of uh, 0.7 or greater or the virus has multiple basic amino acids at C terminus of uh, fusion protein and phenylalanine at residue 117. For Newcastle disease virus, there are two strains of NDV, class 1 and class 2 strains. Class 1 consists of single genotype, while class 2 are more various and contain 18 genotypes. And one of the most diverse genotype in class 2 is the genotype 6, which is responsible for, for Newcastle disease in pigeons and referred to as pigeon paramyxovirus type 1 or PPMV1. Uh, PPMV1 structure is similar to Newcastle disease virus, which has a six structural protein encodes the virus genome. The PPMV1 was first detected in domestic pigeons in Iraq and in 1977, before spreading worldwide, including in Australia. A detail, detail of incursion of PPMV1 into Australia will be described in the next part. Uh, this slide is epidemiology of PPMV1. I will start with distribution. The virus distributes throughout the world, except Antarctica, and it was detected in many countries, such as Italy, the UK, Belgium, Denmark, Switzerland, Netherlands, or Asia, China, Japan, India, and also in Australia. Hosts, hosts of the virus are various, but mainly found in birds in Columbidae family, which are pigeons and dove. Uh, PPMV1 was also reported in poultry and other wild birds as sparrowhawk or falcon. Transmission. Uh, transmission, transmission is more likely similar to those infected with NDV, which is via direct contact and indirect contact. For the direct contact, it's interaction between normal birds and six birds. 
all the indirect contact involve the contamination uh, via uh, personal equipment or feed. Cost of infection, the incubation period range from less than one week up to three to four weeks. The morbidity rate is 30 to 80% and mortality rate is uh, 10 to 80% depending on age, species or its immunity. Prevalent in free living pigeons in Chile was 22% and prevalence estimate in feral pigeons in Croatia was 24.3%. For clinical signs, clinical signs are very uh, dependent on host susceptibility and virus stain. The most common clinical signs in pigeons are depression, lethargy, torticollis, which is a head tube, and tremor at wing or head. And other clinical signs can be seen, such as vomiting, uh, polydipsia, polyurea, or watery diarrhea. To diagnose PPMV1, the techniques are similar to Newcastle Disease Diagnosis and refer to the OIE Newcastle Disease Manual of Diagnostic Test and Vaccine for Terrestrial Animal. The techniques include clinical appearance, celerity test, molecular techniques, and virus isolation. The research question are how prevalent is PPMV1 among feral pigeons in Victoria and what is the potential leaks of transmission from infected pigeon to commercial poultry. Consequently, uh, my research aims are to estimate the prevalence of PPMV1 in feral pigeons in Victoria and to investigate potential loot of uh, virus shedding. I would like to go to the research chapter one, which is the review incursion of PPMV1 into Australia. PPMV1 was first detected in Australia in August 2011. However, the effect cases were recorded individually by each state government and lack of the comprehensive picture of the virus emergency in Australia. So it is important to understand how virus spread across the country and for informing the response. So this chapter aims to gather and correlate PPMB1 data from 2011 to 2021 from all Australian states in order to describe the incursion and space of PPMB1 into Australia in details. Bacterial and methods, uh, data of domestic domestic births were recorded by Animal Biosecurity Authority in each state government, while data in wild births were recorded by Wildlife Health Australia. Also data from case submission from Australian Center for Disease Preparedness or ACDP were requested once I got approval from the state government. And other data was from a uh, published literature. And all these data were requested in terms of investigation date, effect location, infected species, number of infected birds, and during August 2011 until March 2021. And the received data were cost varied with the case submission data from ACDP. And the data that could not be matched with the government data were removed since there might be multiple submissions to the ACDP. And the received effect postcode were geocoded by our statistic package using Google Wearably. And all data were analyzed and reported in aggregate form as epidemic curve in Microsoft Excel and create descriptive mapping via QGIS program. Uh, these are results. A uh, total of 236 infected locations from August 2011 to March 2021 were received. With this number, 83% uh, was domestic pigeons and 16% was feral pigeons. And only a few number were other wild birds. And this is the timeline of PMB1 in Australia. The virus was found in all states, in all Australian states, except Northern Territory. 
it first detected in resting pigeons in Victoria in August 2011, and then spread to feral pigeons in October same year. Or New South Wales. New South Wales found the same spreading pattern as in Victoria, which is the first detected in domestic pigeons in 2012, and before spreading to feral pigeons in November 2012. In Tasmania, the virus spread to Tasmania in June 2013, and in 2015, one pigeon frog was detected in Perth in Western Australia, and once again in November 2018. And the wildlife came to South Australia and Queensland in 2016, and finally, the first detected in feral pigeons in Australian, Australian capital territory in 2018. And these are biosecurity measures implemented after detection, which were similar in each state. Uh, the biosecurity measure comprise practicing personal hygiene, cleaning and disinfecting personal and bird equipment, including vertical, and quarantine of new birds introduced to the farm, and also vaccination to birds. And the disease progression of PPMV1 infected location are depicted as in epidemic curve, and the overall pattern of epidemic curve appear to be a point source epidemic with a rapid increase of infected location, followed by a slower decrease. And from 2014 to 2021, the infected location were continuously detected and the epidemic curve turned into endemic. So if we look at the Victorian and the orange one, the epidemic curve pattern start with same with the point source outbreak with the peak in September 2011 and become sporadic after effective implement uh, of the biosecurity practice in 2012. For New South Wales, with the green color, New South Wales pattern is start with the point source outbreak but the virus continuously detects. So the latter pattern was changed to endemic rather than sporadic as in Victoria, it's different. And this is a descriptive mapping of infected location in Victoria from 2012, uh, 2011 to 2020 in Victoria. And Victoria had 115 infected location, which is the highest number compared to those other states. The round point in the picture represents the domestic birds, and the round point with the dot in the center was wild birds. Wild birds include feral pigeons and other wild birds, but mostly in mostly feral pigeons. Uh, PPMV1 was first detected in a pigeon loft in Shepparton before spreading downward into Melbourne Basin. However, there is no evidence that how the virus was introduced into Australia. One of the known source of infection was from a pet shop where these pigeons were purchased from the pet shop. And many of these pigeons were admitted to a veterinary clinic, which became a focus of transmission because of cross contact between sick pigeons and healthy pigeons in the clinic. And the virus spread to feral pigeons two months after first detect in domestic pigeon, and also other wild birds, such as spot turtle dove and a sparrow hawk has been seen from the analyze. And most of the cluster appear to be tightly in the urban areas in Victoria. Or New South Wales. New South Wales detect PPMV1 every year since April 2012. The first location was in Crimson Park, this is the Blue Star. The importation of this bird from Victoria was considered the likely cause of outbreak in New South Wales. The virus spread rapidly to Greater Sydney in a few months later, and in New South Wales, started with domestic pigeons and spread to feral pigeons in November 2012. And as I mentioned in the EP curve, the outbreak pattern in New South Wales seemed become endemic after the first point outbreak in the early of in the initial of outbreak 
and most of affected birds were domestic pigeons, while only just 4% of the report were feral pigeons in New South Wales. And similar to Victoria, the spatial pattern in New South Wales was highly clustered in the urban area. Discussion. This chapter provides a summary of PPV1 incursion into Australia. The epidemic curve presents the initial point source epidemic, suggests that the virus was new to Australian pigeons, resulting in rapid spread. And after effective biosecurity measure implement, the rate of new infected locations were reduced and the epidemic curve pattern turned to endemic. However, the epidemic curve pattern in Victoria is different. The pattern starts with the initial point source outbreak, but becomes sporadic. And surveillance of the virus in feral pigeons is remit in, in Australia or in Victoria. So only sporadic reports are received. The cluster spatial pattern of infected location in Victoria and New South Wales is likely due to pigeon loft that normally being close together and usually around urban area. So the infection of feral pigeons was also commonly found close to domestic, domestic, domestic pigeon loft via interaction between domestic pigeon and uh, feral pigeon. Or infection of feral pigeons usually found in the area of high human population. All right, and you continue to slide 22. Uh, for discussion, another issue is the detections of PPMV1 in Australia was first seen in domestic pigeons and later spread to other wild birds, including feral pigeons. This pattern also found in other countries such as Italy and the UK. And Pearson reported that feral pigeons in the US received PPMV1 from domestic pigeons via interaction. Uh, PPMV1 is a risk to cause Newcastle disease in poultry, as report in the UK and Macedonia. And however, there is no detection of pigeon relief Newcastle disease to Australian poultry so far. Also, there is no surveillance specifically to PPMV1 in Australia. And another one is a biosecurity practice. Walker state that the virus was introduced into Australia because it's most likely related to the legless uh, biosecurity at Australian border. However, the exact cause of this spreading was not possible to identify from this study. Okay. I'm going to the research chapter two, which is the investigation of PPMB1 in feral pigeons in Victoria. And since I mentioned that there is no specific investigation for PPMB1, so this study is a pilot survey of PPMB1 in feral pigeons in Victoria. And this aims to estimate prevalence of the virus in feral pigeons and to investigate the potential loot of virus shedding. Our detail of the virus have been mentioned previously, so I would like to go through the material and methods. Uh, this project was approved by Unimail Animal Ethics Committee. The sample size was calculated using our package EPR available online with two-stage cluster sampling designs. The assumed prevalence from the previous study in Croatia being of 24.3%, with the design precision of 10% and 95% confidence level with the 0.135 intra-class correlation and estimate pigeon population size of 1 million. The result depended on the number of pigeon trapped per location. If 20 pigeons were trapped per location, then 252 pigeons would be required from 30 locations. But if uh, 15 pigeons were taken per location, then 204 pigeons would be required in total from 40 locations. And 
if 10 pigeons were sampled per cluster, then 157 pigeons would be required from 16 locations. Sampling method. Uh, the target species is feral pigeons and rock dove, Columbia River in Victoria, disregarding sex and age. The pigeons came from two main sources. First is face control company provided, and the second is I catch them by myself via, via trapping or using alpha core road bait. Sampling locations were mainly around poultry lo locations, so that uh, the leaks of PPMB12 chicken is more likely to assay. Poultry farm were got in touch by mail address available at the farm transparency website. Our discussion from my presentation to the Victorian Poultry Health and Welfare Raison Group and through networking with colleagues here. And I have sent email to farm, mails and emails to farms and follow up by a phone call for the using of alpha coros. Uh, it was used with the pigeons in urban area where there were many pigeons around and really less the non-target species, I mean only feral pigeons. And this slide I show you trapping locations that I have installed them. See the blue point in the map. Uh, but yeah, not all of them were successful. And the background of the Victorian map is chicken density per pixel from created livestock of the world global chicken distribution. And this light is trapping process. A trap was installed at the farm with location that pigeon usually appear. And I put the pigeon grain inside and keep the trap window open at least one week to make pigeons familiar with the trap. And pigeon also can get in and get out freedomly. And I have set up an outdoor camera close to the trap so that I can monitor species of birds, time that they appear and how many of them. On the trapping day, I put the feet in the trap and then I close the window so the pigeon can get in but cannot get out. And I have monitored the trap via real-time camera or otherwise I would walk to the trap and check it every 30 minutes due to the animal ethic approval. Uh, using alpha coral bait. alpha coral is a narcotic drug that has been used to control birds. And I use the alpha coros only in urban area, as I mentioned. And there are two forms of alpha coros used in this project. The left one is paste form, which has lower concentration, but it is easy to use. It's just spread on small pieces of bread or biscuit and fed them by my hands or put in the container or plate. And yeah, it might take longer time compared to powder form. I would say it might take like at least 30 minutes to make pigeons loss of conscience. And the next one is powder form. It is 95, 98% uh, concentration, but it's, it's need to be mixed before using. It was mixed by six grams of alpha core rose powder with the 600 grams of pigeon feed. And I put in the container and the closed container and mix them. And yeah, and then add further uh, 10 ml of corn oil and shake once again until well mixed. And then I fed pigeon in the container and monitor them closely. Once pigeon had the sign of loss of consciousness, then I took the, I took them into a closed cardboard box with a small hole to like make the air flow a little bit. And this is the way to collect sample. Pigeons were euthanized by using overdose of isoforane, and I put the two pieces of cotton swab ball, not, not cotton swab, uh, I put two pieces of cotton balls uh, into a small glasses of water, and then I pour the isoforane around three to five ml into the bottle, and then I place the pigeon heads into the bottle and heal it for at least 15 minutes from my experience, or until pigeon die. To ensure that pigeon die, so we call this location was conduct afterwards, and then I collect sample from pigeons. Firstly, I use the sterile cotton swab taking from Coeca and Orofalinge, and then I place the cotton swab into the VTM viral transport media and keep it at minus 70 
until testing. And for the blood collection, I usually use cardiac puncture to get the blood from pigeons. And I took like two or 2.5 mil from each pigeon and put into a serum tube. And the serum tube, the, the tube, the big tube, were kept in the fridge for one or two nights. And then I spun them to separate serum from the whole blood uh, using centrifuge with the 2,500 G for 15 minutes. And then I put the serum into my cold tube and store the micro tube serum at minus 20. Our samples were tested at ACDP or AAHL. And the serum samples were tested by hemagglutination inhibition test or HI test with two kinds of uh, antigen comprising NDVB4 and PPMB1 isolated from Victoria in 2011. The swab sample were tested by qPCR. The positive qPCR then were tested by virus isolation. The statistic method used in this study comprising chi-square fissure exact test are package EPR for the true prevalent estimate using Lotin garden formula and for the oscillation used for compare statistical, statistical difference between regions via our statistic package. The phylogenetic analysis were performed on the full range of virus UTXS sequence data provided by ACDP to compare the isolated virus from this study to other palamics or virus. Phylogenetic data was downloaded from GenBank to encompass all relevant F-gene sequence from study by Sharn and Dimitrov. The download data were imported to Mecca Software version 11 for analysis, and the maximum likelihood phylogenetic tree was constructed and annotated. The virus isolate from this study will perform the variation analysis in terms of single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNP with a synonymous SNP and non synonymous SNP compared to those other reports in. Chance and college in 2021. All right, let's come to the result. Overall, there were 182 fewer pigeons sample from 11 different locations in Victoria from January to December 2021. Uh, the pigeons from each location are present in the table and the location were divided into four regions, uh, south, comprised southeastern, central region, eastern region, and western region. For the zero prevalence result, the results show more serological positive on HIPPMB1 than HINDV. Overall, there were 82 samples positive HIPPMB1 and 79 samples positive NDVV4. Of these 82 samples, 64 were positive both HIPPMV1 and HINDVV4. And 54 of 64 had higher title of PPMV1. And 10 samples had equal titles to uh, between HIPPMV1 and HINDV. And just only one sample that ha has a higher title on NDV. So overall apparent prevalence estimate was 45% with 95% confidence level from uh, 38 to 53. And the highest zero prevalence location were from Noble Park and followed by Kaniki and Dandenong South. The estimate true prevalence adjusted by sensitivity and specific city value of HINDV was uh, 54. So if we look at the sampling regions, the zero prevalence in southeastern region had the highest number, which is the 70% prevalence, while the western region had the lowest true prevalence. And the true prevalence of the virus in central and 
its lithium was 45 and 39. And the results were compared using odd ratio. Look at the upper table. Southeast lithium was selected as the reference group since it has the largest samples and despite having the higher zero prevalence, which resulted in point estimate of the other odds ratio being less than one. The odds of zero pigeon sample from East Legion were 63% lower than those in Southeast Legion, while the odds ratio of the zero prevalence of zero pigeon sample from Central and Western region were 55 and 93% lower than those samples from Southeast Legion. With a p-value of uh, 0.015. And the lower table show the statistically significant difference between zero prevalence of pheopictian sample from each Legion, which the uh, yeah, the central and western region have the statistic, statistical difference with the p-value of uh, 0.046. For the molecular result and virus isolation, all of the oral swab tests were negative by qPCR, and there were only three coagul swab samples detect PPMB1, which was 9.4% apparent prevalence. And all of these were from North Melbourne. And the length of CT value was of 32.8, uh, 36.7, and 37.7. And all three PCR positive coagul swab were also tested by virus isolation and confirmed with the hemagglutination test. Only the sample that has CT value of the 32.8 was positive on hemagglutination after virus isolation. And the rest of sample were that had a higher CT value had no hemagglutinating reactions. So this virus isolation was important for the full range sequencing of the virus genome. The genetic analysis showed that the virus isolated from this study was more likely close to the PPMB1 isolated in 2011 Australian outbreak. The PPMB1 is isolated was named as the PB49 North Melbourne at 4th of July 2021 at the Red Triangle. And this isolate was found to belong to the class 2 genotype 6, subgenotype 6 to 1122 of avian palamic for virus type 1. The amino acid sequence at F gene cubic side motif of the PB49 North Melbourne isolate was the 112 RRQRF117 and was identical to amino acid sequence of the virus sample during the outbreak and was categorized as virulent NDV. And the terminal amino acid sequence of HN gene or hemagglutinin neuraminidase of the PPMB1 isolase was KDRRV, which differ one site from the amino acid sequence of the virus isolated in 2011, which is KDERV. Also, the isolate virus had no HN extension after the terminal N, and which classified as virulent NDV as well. For the variation analysis, indicate that PPMB1 isolate had the lowest variation to those previous six Australian isolates in 2011, with the SNP of uh, 24 to 25, synonymous SNP of 17, and non synonymous SNP of 7 to 8. So let's go to the discussion. The overall zero prevalence against PPMD1 was almost two times higher in ferropixin in Victoria than ferropixin in the previous study in Croatia and Chile. 
since the sensitivity and specificity value for PP for HIPPMV1 were not available in the literature. So the true prevalence from this study using the sen sensitivity and specificity value from HINDV and yeah, might be by as estimation of the true prevalence. Almost all true prevalence estimates in each sampling location were higher than apparent prevalence estimates with the exception at Meredith in the Western region. And this might relate to the relatively lower sensitivity than specificity estimate available for HINDV assay. All the lower true prevalence at Meredith is likely related to the low prevalence at this location or specificity value used in the calculation. And another thing is the higher antibody response to PPMV1 than V4 was likely related to costly action. And this also means that fewer pigeons were more exposure to PPMV1 than NDV. The infected pigeons with the PPMV1 have ability to generate cost antibody to other NDV strains and the use of B4 antigen aiming for identification of vaccine reaction. But however, fewer patients were not uh, vaccinated with the Newcastle disease. So, but yeah, they can, can infect the V4 vaccine strain through interaction with the vaccinate poultry. Then all of positive HI in the VV4 in fewer pigeons with the equal or lower title to PPMV1 was assumed to be the costly action. And most of the fewer pigeons in this study show highly costly action to NDV, which agree with the previous work by Chan and colleagues in 2021. However, there were a few samples that positive only in the VV4. So this is likely due to the natural infection with the V4 strain. And the PPLB1 is still potential leaks to cause in the in poultry and needs to be monitored because, because of the virulence from genetic analysis. The results show that PPMV1 is more likely, more, more highly prevalent in Southeast region than other regions. The region has the Southeast region has the high density of poultry farms and likely less represent a high leaks region for pigeon deliver pigeon deliver uh, Newcastle disease to poultry. And the zero prevalence in central and west regions were statistically different, uh, lower than the Southeast region. And these two regions had lower poultry farm as well. So in these two lithium, the leaks of transmission to poultry as pair lower. PPMV1 is spread through Victorian feral pigeons population according to the zero prevalence estimate. The distribution of PPMV1 in feral pigeons vary in many locations, but the finding from chapter two indicate that PPMV1 is sporadic at the moment, but there is surely under detection or the previous study, because the two prevalence from this study indicate that the, the prevalence is high in many locations, suggesting that it might be endemic exposure in Victoria. And this study finding therefore support the statement of Kowan that the, and he said that the PPMV1 is endemic in Australia. Although there were highly prevalence of PPMV1 in feral pigeons from this study, the detection of PPMV1 shading swab test was low. And the positive qPCR swab in this study were from only three coagal swab. As a result, coagal secretion is a potential loss of transmission of the virus in this study. And the virus isolated from North Melbourne, which is from the feed manufacturing at North Melbourne, so fear of pigeon is in, in this location in North Melbourne are a leaks of PPMV1 transmitted to poultry via feed contamination as reported in the UK in 1984. So what is important epidemiologically is that given the high zero prevalence of PPMV1 in pigeons in the present study, 
the virus is being transmitted among the patient population in Victoria, but at any one time, just a small number of virus changing. And therefore, there appears to be a low level leak of PPMB1 being introduced to poultry in Victoria, especially if Newcastle disease virus vaccination still perform. The sequence analysis indicates that the isolated virus is very close to PPMB1 isolated in uh, 2011, but distinct from the other PPMB1 isolated from elsewhere in the world. And this suggests that the virus has evolved from the earlier introduction rather than the new introduction from other, other country. And also the amino acid sequence of F protein and Hessian protein were identical to the PPMB1 from 2011 and also identified as virulent NDV. However, several studies have indicated that Using only F protein cleavage motif and terminal extension of HN protein might not be the most e effective way to determine virulence because other factors need to be considered, such as host, host, of spe host species and virus stain. And another way to identify pathogenicity might be like IC, ICP, intracellular pathogenicity index. All right, this is the last slide for, before going to acknowledgement. In conclusion, uh, fewer patients in Victoria has a high zero prevalence of PPMB1. However, the virus shedding from export patients were low. And the potential loss of virus shedding was from coagulation, secretion. So this suggests that the contamination of chicken feed, chicken feed with the patient's feces cannot be ruled out. And the virus isolate in this study is closely related to the virus in 2011 outbreak and appear to be virulent. And acknowledgement. So I have to say thank you for everyone who always supporting me, uh, my advisory committee, my government for sponsorship, the Department of Agriculture and Fishery and Forestry for funding this project, state government for the data, Poultry farms and feed manufacturers for allowing me to catch pigeon, Professor Amir for all support, and Parisa for PC2 lab guiding at Parkview, and Jonathan from Agricultural Victoria for all support, Andrew who's allowed me to catch pigeon at this property, Dennis and Ling Shu for viral transport media and serology instruction, and also Martin at Veribi for, for organizing everything at Veribi campus. Uh, Dr. Jasmine for outdoor camera for monitoring patients and Chumus, my friend, for driving and take me to poultry farms. And last but not least, all Melbourne Veterinary School staff for all supports. Thank you. Well done, Tiluit. Um, yeah, you must put so much effort in, and um, into your presentations, and they're yeah, very clear and yeah, well, good way to summarise everything that you've done. Fantastic effort. Um, I'll just add one more acknowledgement there to Wildlife Health Australia. We've got Claire and Rupert here from there, and they also contributed to data. But yeah, great. Um, great to see them able to join us. And actually, Rupert has asked the first couple of questions. I might, if you. Audio and video are working, Rupert, you're most welcome to ask directly or I can repeat your question. Yeah, thanks, uh, Simon. Not nice work, um, Tiwit, um, and, and uh, way to go, Melbourne Uni, leading the charge of us all. I'm, I'm interested in management uh, and I've got two questions. Um, firstly, uh, how important do you think this disease is uh, with respect to the many other disease threats that are facing us at the moment. So specifically, should we be doing more uh, or is general surveillance and increased biosecurity awareness in the pigeon industry enough? And then my, my second question is, uh, what have we learned 
And, and do you have any advice for us on how, on how we might better approach disease incursions like this in future? So given what you now know, Titiwiti, if you could go back to Victoria in 2011, uh, what advice might you uh, give us or have given us then or advised us to do differently? Thanks, Simon. There's a lot in there, isn't there? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I personally think that this wireless is not, not, not most important, but not this regard. It's because from this study, the wireless can be, it's, it's still the leaks, it's still the, it's still the violence. The, I mean, it's still virulent as NDV, but uh, together with the poultry system, poultry production system is like give vaccination, the vaccination, so the leaks is low. But yeah, as I mentioned, the virus can be a leak to cause Newcastle disease in poultry. So yeah, it is important to like, to continue the big scale of surveillance in pigeons. And another question. Do you have advice, right? Uh, from my study, I try to get information from, from like East State government, but yeah, some information still limit. So if there is the new incursion, we need to, yeah, I think but Australia has the very strong biosecurity system, but even the new disease introduced to Australia, I think the data have to be like record in the same pattern. I think that should be easy to identify. It's good to see how far you've come to you. You answered those questions really well, given uh, <laughs> yeah, where we've brought you from over two years, so that's three years, so that's fantastic. Um, I would have answered very similarly to a couple of Rupert's questions. So um, yeah, I think if anything, it helps um, emphasize the importance of it, Newcastle disease vaccination for the poultry industry, doesn't it? So, yeah. Um, excited to see a question from Song Hua here because we've benefited greatly from your paper um, early on. So Song Hua is asking, um, about the antigen used for seroprevalence and the cutoff for serological testing, which I think you mentioned, but if you just want to repeat that, um, just for clarity. Or, yeah, I will answer the, the question from Xiong Hua. Uh, there, there are two antigens, the NDV V4 and PPMV1, PPMV1 isolated in 2011, Victoria. Yeah, and the cutoffs, and I the think she was cut, asking you. Uh, the cutoff is different between two antigen. The V4, V4 antigen, it's eight, H8, H, the title at eight, and uh, the, uh, the PPMV1, it's four. She'll have to stay tuned for your paper. <laughs> So all the yeah, all the detail will be will be there. I think that hopefully is very. I think that's similar to what you would have done in the previous Newcastle disease work um, in the ACDB study. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has got any further questions, but um, yeah, I think you've you've covered it all in my mind pretty well, Tiddy Um I think it, it was very interesting that the place that you got your um your PCR positives and isolate were from the feed mill. Um, I think what hasn't come across from all your presentations probably is the amount of effort that it took to, to capture pigeons and then the amount of um, work, yeah, the not getting positives except through, through serology. So a whole lot of work to find a very small amount of, of, of active shedding, isn't it? So I think we were thinking about that early on for risk assessment purposes of how hard it was to to find pigeons around the, the poultry farms sort of says something about the risk as well. If, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. Um, but we're... Yeah. 
do you want to tell us, Tiddywit, about how 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 long it took you to <laughs> to capture your first few pigeons around those farms? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. So Rupert's got his hand up again. But essentially, it took a hell of a lot of work um, to to capture his two hundred pigeons. So it sort of says there's a low. Yeah, the interface is not as as much as as we may perceive. But yeah, um, Rupert, did you have another question to ask? Yeah, I'm I'm just interested in in what others think about the speed of this. You know, because initially it was a sort of uh, here it is jumps into New South Wales, uh, sort of burns fairly brightly uh, and then moves across the country within the sort of eight or nine year period. And if, if you think about that from one perspective, you kind of think, oh, wow, you know, this is the, this is the first time I've seen something like this. I, I guess it probably is, you know, or, or that we've had data to, to actually be able to map the, map the spread and, and the sort of uh, the, the, the way that's happened temporarily. You guys, as epidemiologists, what do you think? Because there's one part of me that sort of looks at that and thinks, well, wow, look at that. It's burnt across the country in nine years. And then there's the other part of me that sort of sits there and goes, well, these things fly. You know, it's a paramyxovirus. It's infectious. That seems incredibly slow to me. I mean, do you guys have, can you give us any sort of feel knowing what you know about infectious disease and epidemiology did you have a sort of feel for the speed of this i mean do you think it's been fast or have you been surprised by how, how slowly it's moved uh, i mean have you got have you got any kind of feel for us kind of lay people about uh, how this has behaved uh, epidemiologically or on a whole of nation kind of scale let's let titty wit go first <laughs> if you want to try and answer that first titty wit uh, one more question, right? Yes, yeah, so Rupert's asking, do you, do you consider the scale fast or slow? Um, and what sort of factors do you think are important for that? Uh, the factor for, sorry, sorry, Simon, the factor for... Oh, do you think this, the spread interstate, the, the spread around the country um, yeah. over many, it's taken many years actually from the initial point sources and yeah. whether you feel that was fast or slow and the importance of that epidemiologically? I think it's gradually spread to other states. But yeah, because we didn't, we didn't have like the surveillance program to, to the pandemic so virus. So yeah, only the, we just received the data when patients show clinical signs or something like this. Yeah, I think adding to what you said there, I, I agree it's pretty slow in a, in a sense, Rupert. It's really not the sort of rapid outbreak we're used to, but I think we commonly see things moving, people moving animals leading to a lot of the rapid spread of diseases around the country. And the home range of your feral pigeons is pretty small, isn't it, Tidiwit? Um, from they're, they're pretty lazy. I think was what he's reporting in his lit review. And so I, said, I think we amount to ecologically thinking about how quickly the disease is spreading around between sort of populations at various sites um, and then very low rates. I think overall, we've, we're seeing a very high seroprevalence, but very low rate of active shedding that we could detect. So it, it, it is probably small numbers in your large pool of pigeons that are actually causing this to, to burn along. Um, so... Yeah, there's a number of interesting factors there. Um, I'm happy for people to leave. Claire's got a good... I don't, I don't know, Rupert, if you're happy with how we're answering that or if you've got more to chip in. Oh, no, I, I, just, I just think it's absolutely wonderful to actually see the data being used and to draw some pictures, you know, with, with visual animals and, you know, to, to, show us, to show us a picture and to use the data and to try to, to join it up. I mean, as you know, um, Tiddy, what often happens... In these incursions, you know, we're, we're always in clear and present danger. So we're all scrambling to get over one before we get into the other. And often we don't spend the time to actually go back and actually have a look at the data and look at what we've learned. So I, I, I just think serious respect to you and, and to whoever thought this up because it's, um, 
uh, you know, it's, it's unfinished business. We, we can learn a lot from this one. So nice, nice work, Melbourne. I think it's Gemma's original, Gemma's original grant that we inherited as she moved back to ACDP, but she's remained involved the whole way. And I think a credit goes to, to Wildlife Health Australia and all the other data sources. Um, but Tilly, you really hit a very key point there with the systematic um, data collection, because you had a lot of hard work trying to bring this together to make it meaningful. Um, and, I, and I suppose back to what you were talking about, Rupert, it is, um, it's not the avian influenza or the JE, it's a very different sort of, and I suppose that's part ecological, part viral. Um, so it's, there's lots of different factors in the epidemiology. And I, th I think we get into a mo mode of thinking, thinking like FMD or thinking like avian in influenza, but yeah, this is a very different, very different beast. Um, we're pretty much out of time. Um, I think, Claire, um, we might ask Tiddywick to send you an email about the other species um, yep. that are affected nationally because he's got all that data because um, he put it all together and it's good to share that back to you so it's made use of. Um, so we might leave it there. Um, yeah, and um, thanks everyone for attending and your interest today and well done Tiddywick again on reaching this point in your Masters and uh, good luck on the final few, final few metres up the road to the finish line. So, yeah. Well Thank you, everyone, too. Thank you. Um, to the other meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just...